everybody welcome back today uh you may notice we're gonna do something a little different we're virtually gonna go on a tour with paul fitzgeorge did i say that right yeah okay good <laughs> um he's gonna take us through Crip Kriplin. Kiplin Hall, right? Well, through the grounds of it. And then tell we're going to talk a little bit about Lord Baltimore and why Lord Baltimore sounded familiar to me because he sent over some great research about who he is. And and then we're going to, he, uh, Paul, this is how this all started. He shared an email, he sent an email to me and he shared photos of skeletons because he knows I mean, I don't know if you can see Smalls back there, but he knows I love skeletons. So he's like, I have oh, yes. some photos you might enjoy. So we're he, we're gonna just kind of walk through a little bit and take a quick jaunt jaunt through. Or, or it's called Crows. What was it called? Crows. Crows Wood, I think it's called, isn't it? Crows Wood. Okay. Wood. It's the it's yeah. the old. It's the forestry part of the, the hall has. It's just beyond the lovely walled garden that they have there, uh, a sort of 18th century walled garden. Uh, and then there's the forest. And then if you look, go to the right, the forest is lovely lands where all the sheep, safely grazing sheep, uh, are there. And beyond that's the lake, uh, which is full of lovely geese. Canada geese, for you know. <laughs> and so do they do, like, do you go every year over there uh, or do you go often or? Well, I'm lucky because I live in Catrick, which is actually, I was just looking at the Maryland University, so that's where Lord Baltimore was actually born, where I live. Uh, and it's literally 10 minutes down the road. So I just, really, and I've got a historic houses pass. So I go there, I go there about twice a week because it's such a lovely place to go around. But the actual hall itself is full of, um, it's it's one of those ones. It's not a boring old house. It's a, it's a, what I would call uh, what you know academics call it a cabinet of curiosities. It's full of, it's, like, it's got Lord Nelson's steps for his library. Uh, there's there's paint. There's, there's some paintings of the, the the Korean ambassadors visiting Japan in the, sometime in the 16th century. And they're, they're all over the place. These things. So it's it's bits here, bits there. There's the big portrait of Lord Calvert, obviously. Uh, and it's a lovely place to go around because you you, you go from one room to another, uh, and as, as there it is there that big window you can see in the, the photograph that's the the library and it really is I wish I had a library like it it's a beautiful library uh, and that's where Lord Nelson's uh, steps from his library are actually living at the moment. Um, and then the upper floors you've got the various guys there's pictures of the, the Tudors James I obviously because Lord Calvert was a secretary to to James I of uh, England and sixth of Scotland uh, and that was under obviously under his instructions that he went out to, to form his, he and his son what was more likely his son because he died by the time that the, the charter was granted to form the, the colony of Maryland and that's why obviously the, the Baltimore is named after Lord Calvert Baltimore oh and let me see if I have him is that this is. him? That's okay. the man. He's a he. He, he was a very clever man, um, and I say he was private secretary to, to James the, the, the first. Uh, and there's a. It, it was actually formed as a refuge for Catholics, Maryland, uh, because of the you know the various Protestant Catholic uh, thing, things that were happening that time. I mean Elizabeth had just be, died. James the first and sixth of Scotland was a Protestant came on the throne, but there was still a lot of Catholics who wanted to practice so Maryland was actually put together for that in fact Maryland University has a, an office has an actual a section within the hall itself that's really used exclusively by Maryland University they come over every so often to go through the various deeds and documents in the in their specific section of the hall um, and it's a it's a, a research station for them ap apropos uh, their history oh that's really oh my gosh you did you know a lot. I didn't know that I was very, when you said, here's a little bit more about everything, mm. I was like, wait, that's how, that's who kind of Maryland's named after, how it, that was his colony, I guess, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, his son is the one that may be, if you look at them, if people want to look at it in more detail, there's loads on the web, but his son was the one that actually made, made the exploit of it, but he he was the one that founded it mm. yeah, under the auspices of James I. Uh because you know, Virginia being obviously the Elizabethan one, um, um, J was it now Jamestown? I think was the um, is also one of the one of the towns, but that's all in, towards the Virginia. Okay. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's and funny because around here, the court, the, the, there's, there's Kippen Hall, and then just about 40 minutes away, there's Washington, where the Washington family came from. Uh, and they, they had all their first, their houses there, but, you know, the, the actual family home, uh, where George Washington would have, you know, his, not, he wasn't born here, but obviously that's where his family came from and went from here over to America. Wow! Who are yeah. you? I want to go there. For American history. <laughs> and where is this? This is north, do you say it? Yorkshire? Uh, uh, that's more towards, I think that's more, that's towards Durham, Northumbria, the Washington uh, place. This here, Calvert's place, is North Yorkshire. Oh. Uh, and I, I see he was actually born in Catrick itself, where I am now, Catrick. So, but I mean, Catrick, Catrick's a big garrison town. It's one of the biggest British garrisons in the country, in the, well, probably in the whole country, but I live in the village, which is separate from that, and um, the the village has got history going right back. I mean, when I'm sitting now talking to you, 100 yards to my left is Deer Street, and that was the Imperial Roman Highway from Rome literally up to Hadrian's Wall. So if you were sitting here two, a couple of thousand years ago, looking to your left, you'd probably see a Roman legion marching by on the, on the main road, which is just to my left. How cool is that? Oh my gosh, you guys over there are surrounded by... I'm up to here with history. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, I think it, like anybody in England probably has like a, a, at least a, a college level degree in, in history. You have to, because just from you just absorb it, I would imagine. Well, it's the things you live around. I mean, here, as I say, the Roman roads there... The, there was a battle, the Battle of Catara, between the last of the, the Celts and the Anglo-Saxons who were invading at that time. And of course, a lot of the names around here are, are uh, the Viking, the Norse, because this was part, after after the Saxon era, this was part of Danelaw. Uh, for instance, there's places like Enderby Steeple, and that's, Enderby is a, a Viking name, it's Inda, Inda's, um, Inda's town, Inda, Inderby, Inda's town. And that was his, the church was there. And Inderby Quernhow is where Inder's um, mill for grinding corn was. So there are lots of Viking names around here. And then and you've got a, a sort of smattering of Norman as well. So it's one of those places where a lot of people seem to walk in by on the way to somewhere. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize that. I know you. I'm going to really quick, too, throw in... Um, we first, I think it was you, I don't know if you reached out or I found you somehow and I reached out to you, but it was Whitby that Whitby. with the vampires and Bram Stoker yeah, and you know a lot about. Yeah, and that's another Viking town. Whitby is Whit, the white the white town. Uh, that's that's the Viking name for it. Uh, Peturia might have been its Roman name, but Whitby, it's, it's Viking. A lot of the, the, the customs there as well, like the Kirka Vassal, remember that one in the church, the spectral animal on the window that's a that's a norse uh, mythology as well so room for the norse mythology. <laughs> it's all around so that is, is so exciting so okay so then i'm gonna get to these uh photo well let's talk a little bit before i get i'm gonna save the good photos for for the end we'll talk a little bit about the ghostly they don't always do ghost tours there right they do, they do occasionally. I, I mean, the, the thing was with stately homes like Kipling, they're trying to monopolise, obviously, on their history so they can keep the place. In fact, Kipling Hall was falling into disrepair about 70, 80 years ago. And what happened is the woman who owned it then, who's a, a descendant of the Calverts, um, she sold some rights to the local uh, quarry company to dig, dig for uh, shale. You know, not so much shale, it's uh, gravel. And by selling the rights to that, they got this lovely lake made very large lake made all the gravel got taken out and the money from the, the gravel paid for the restoration of the hole oh. so they always obviously they, they've got to make ends meet because a lot of these these uh, big houses they when when the lord died the death duties were so large that it could bankrupt the family so they they, they either had to you know open them to the public or in some cases give them to the national trust and be able to still live there uh, because of the, because of the expense of the death duties, the the Kiplings though they might uh, the lady there she managed to get, get the hall restored, which is why it's in such a nice state now. They do ghost tours, uh, but not not regularly. They do them you know, on and off, um, and they've got the, they're building a whole new visitor center there, so they're doing quite well. The the for, and I think that's probably going to include a lot of the American history for people who come from America to come and look at me about Maryland. Uh, there's there's well. 
upstairs and the, the, the whole, that picture you saw the whole there's a whole gallery the, the map where Calvert's ships the Ark and the Dove came from England to go to um, Bolton One America. Uh, there's there's quite a good, big good bit of history, there. but that's how that's how they managed to keep the whole going. Ghost tours are one thing. Uh, they do various little bits and bobs uh, during the during the year, but Halloween they have usually have a, a good spread, which is why they've, they've done it, the, the the forest walk this year. Ah, that's cool. So that's what we're going to talk about with the photos with the forest walk. But the um, sure. the ghosts were sort of interesting because, as you can imagine, with the, or, well, it's, I think it's sometimes hard for us to imagine because you guys have so much history. But they had from Victorian to I think there was even a World War Two or World War One. Yeah. I, I, I mean, because this area around here was um, there were quite a lot of World War Two airfields. A lot of Canadian pilots, uh, some Americans, uh, obviously British, Australian, New Zealanders. And in fact, a little cemetery here in Catterick Village, the, the Civil War graves there for men from New Zealand, Canada, Australia, and, and obviously Brit Britain. But the Commonwealth War graves have about 20 graves in the local uh, cemetery. They're, they're all, all dotted around. And of course, in Catterick itself, there was an airfield here as well during the Second World War. Um, simply because the, the, they were waiting for the droves of the North Sea to attack um, Hull and places like that. Oh, wow. That's so. Where I'll have to look on a map, but where are you exactly uh, in, in uh, like. Northeast England, if you, okay. if you go, the nearest big town is North Allerton. Uh, to my south, and then Darlington to my northeast. Uh, the nearest Latin nearest city is actually York, but that's that's a fair distance away. It's um, Catrick lies. Hmm, I'm just trying to think the best way to explain it. We're we're towards the east, but we're we're in inland. Um, but it was a strategic. It's a, it's a strategic place because it's it, it's the place where all the the main road from time immemorial came past. Uh, so we've got the M1, which is the highway now, just past Deer Street on my left. Uh, that's the main arterial. That's cool. And, um, oh, and going back to the ghost tours at Kipling Hall, I, I, that's why I wondered, because it seemed like um, they kind of, they do do them, but like it was like Halloween maybe. And maybe yeah. like kind of here we had the president Andrew Jackson's Hermitage, and they only do ghost tours at, you know, October. So that's kind of uh, fun. Yeah, I think they, I think Kip and Hall the same. They they'll do seasonal things. For instance, they'll do they do a big Christmas festival there because it's it's a very Christmassy place. I mean, yeah, I've got some photographs of the, the tree they had there, uh, and then they'll do various things during the year to drum up business, basically. That's awesome. Yeah, I really I was really impressed with the different ghost stories that there were there i think there was like some sobbing and um that, that was probably me oh, <laughs> no, oh why were you crying i don't know i just probably saw, saw the cost of my my annual ticket oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh and then this oh so this was an interesting one something about the there's a presence of a governess in the servants tunnel yeah, the servants' tunnels to as you go in the main entrance, that's to the right. Uh, that, so that the, the, the something. I mean, they don't make a big deal about it. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they mention it during the, do, the do, during the ghost uh, walks they do there. It's not something that they've exploited a lot as yet. Um, I mean, I volunteered to go and, and work in the Maryland Library because I'd love to do a, a short book on Lord Calvert uh, in there, but. It, it's, it's something they don't particularly exploit that the the ghost tours that they do them obviously for Halloween just to drum up business and get extra money, but I think I think they're trying to be push the more historical end of the uh, of the uh, hall itself. I mean it's got a lot of history to it, so that's awesome. Yeah, either way, and the and when they mean tunnel, do, do they mean more hallway or is it an actual? It's more, I would say, from what I remember, it's the house, when I go there quite a lot, it's more a, a, an actual a hallway that goes from the, the main dining room through to the main kitchen. Okay. Uh, and it, I mean, it's, the, the kitchen's not massive uh, as far as stately homes go. It's, it's, a, it's a modestly si medium-sized stately home compared to somewhere like Castle Howard, uh, which is massive. 
uh, it's quite modest but it's uh that that's in the way it's 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 good point because you can easily walk around it and there's there's lots of variety some lovely paint paintings as well um they've got you know some sort of pre rifle like uh, paintings in some of the rooms and there's a bat there's a part that's been preserved from World War Two so it looks exactly as it did in World War Two and I think the, the, the forces had people garrison you know air pilots there because the, most most of these old houses were used for uh, barracks uh, well to barrack the, the airmen and soldiers during the war because they needed as much space as possible to put them in you know, beds. Oh, that's so, it has so much history. Like I would, that was, that's a place I would totally want to yeah, see. Yeah. So, that's, and now we can get to the, um, the, not the good stuff, because this has all been good stuff, but he likes <laughs> this part of the photo. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll start, well, I'll start with this one. And that's just a, a guy hanging out in a tree, right? He's just hanging out in the forest, having a good time. He's a bit hungry. Uh, he's stuck out the tree. They're, they're, they're quite clever. They've made a really good effort here. Um, he, this one, as you come around the corner, he's in the tree. Just beyond him, actually, the, the lovely farmlands I was talking about, where all the sheep are. But bear in mind, this is daytime in bright sunshine. You can imagine when, they, when they've got it lit up at night for spooky walks. In fact, I was there, I, I was going to go there yesterday, and as I turned, we turned the corner to go in, it was mobbed. There was hundreds of people, so it's very, very popular. The oh, so you can go on, they light it up at night, and you can go through at night, but, too. Yes, as far as I mean, it's mostly for kids, but it's, you know, towards the evening, and the, not too late, but towards the evening, there was, have at the moment, we have half-term holiday, so there are literally hundreds of school kids everywhere. Um, and yeah, I went to one ago and I couldn't, I couldn't park. The place, you know, usually it's quite, you know, reasonable. You can park up easily. But there was cars, rows and rows of cars. So the, the, the walk was very popular. Uh, there was loads of kids there yesterday. Oh, my gosh. That's, well, I can see why. So that was a really fun one. And then yep. here's some other with the cages. This cracked me up. I thought this was so fun. Oops. Oh, there's a feeling, feeling a bit claustrophobic <laughs> yes that is so funny and then what was um i'm gonna save it oh this one this is just too perfect with spiders. little walking with spiders <laughs> it, it's two spiders right that that it's it is two spiders yep and um, the oh. natty reds <laughs> <laughs> it's well, just the, so the funny wedding. yeah what and the wedding this, what the, the fishing oh, Yes, he hasn't got a bite, but I think there's a, in the, you can't really see it too clearly, but there's a, there's a fish's skeleton in the lake looking out at him going, what? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask, because I was like, I saw something in the back, and I'm like, is he in an inner tube, or is he in oh, another little a, boat? That's a guy out there, you know, a skeleton guy out there, having a, having a, you know, floating around and contemplating the Buddha or something. Oh, that's hilarious. And then, um, whoops, here we go. Oh, this one's a really cute, fun one. Yeah, the country their... western. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate that one from you know living in Nashville and seeing the yeah. the country western. And Probably then an old, an old cow hand from the Rio Grande or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. And this is uh, they're having a. I what is that? A B bottles. I think they have the wine tasting there. It's a. It's a, a they're drinking something with a cheeky bouquet, probably, probably arsenic. <laughs> <laughs> All I knew was I was like, okay, so it, it or like they just having a wine picnic. I didn't even think of wine tasting. I'm like, that is a lot of wine bottles, but it's cool because even some of them, do they have candles in them? Yeah, a few have candles. I think, I think they're getting quietly hammered there saying, you know, shall we have another candle or shall we have another bottle of wine? <laughs> uh, I shall wax back. You see, I, wa I shall wax lyrical. <laughs> I wax lyrical. <laughs> That's funny. And then, oh, let's see, which one am I going to share yet? Oh, I'm going to save my I'll last one. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't buy anything from him, would you? <laughs> no. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to be having much success with his own uh, al alchemist wares. <laughs> no, his merchandise his merchandise didn't, uh, didn't seem to hold up too well, but I love that they have like what impressed me too was that's an actual 
massive cabinet, like piece of furniture of some kind well, out probably there. Probably out the house. Probably, and this is the thing, that house is full of things. Like that, so it's probably out, out the house. Actually, it's probably selling slimming products because uh, they've been very successful for years. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the sort of things they have in the house, you see. And I mean, the other one, when you see them with the bed, that's probably one of the house's beds. Oh, my God. And this one's my favorite one. I was going to save that one for last. But this, when I when it came through on my email, all I could see was a corner of the bed post with the spider, you know, in yep. the sheet. So I knew it was a bed, but I was like, what in the heck? And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's a full-size covered canopy bed with spider skeletons. <laughs> this is crazy. What, what, what I asked him, he said he was dead tired. Ah! <laughs> ah, the old ones are still the best, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll end with, oh, this one was super clever. Holy cow. Yeah, I call that art for art's sake. <laughs> <laughs> art for art's sake. <laughs> it's true. It, it's total. I, I just can't get over how clever all of these were. I was so excited. You... Funny enough, in the house itself, there's some. Uh, I think there's at least one canaletto. Uh, so you know, the, the I mean, that's a, that's a mock-up. But in the house itself, on the galleries, there's at least one canaletto I saw, and a few other ones, you know, Venetian ones from from the, the you know, what they call the Grand Tour. The, the Lord of the house would have probably got done late, later on. Would have done the Grand Tour of Italy and picked up paintings there. But some really nice paintings, and I'd say some of the lovely oddities like the the, the Korean ambassador's visit to Japan. And it's all these beautiful ships. Uh, with sails, and um, we're talking about something like 16th, 17th century, uh, and they're just. And the thing is, they're just on the walls. You know, it's not. They're not very pretentious. It's just lovely. Just walk through, and you find this thing here, this thing there, and you th uh, there's, there's there's bits about the people who work there. So it's a it's an interesting place to go. But I say their effort this this Halloween is really good. And I thought that's why I'd send you the pictures because I, I know you're into bones. So um, <laughs> there's a bone to pick with you. <laughs> That would have been hilarious if you put that. I have a bone to pick with you. I'd have been like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> and if I would have seen those pictures, I would have just died. That's awesome. I'm so grateful you shared them with me. And even better, you, you know, did some digging into the history of the house and the ghost stories. And then you came to talk with me. And I hope that people I'm watching will enjoy this. Give you a bit of a history from from merry old england i uh, love it thank you so much Pleasure. <laughs>